How are you guys doing? Today's episode is sponsored by Factor and Established Titles. All right, so I want you guys to do me a favor. If you guys are new to the channel, please do yourself a favor, I guess, and that would be subscribe. We've been covering the war inside of Ukraine since February, so I would assure you guys we we're going to be the best place you could find the correct information. I, I think we are at least, so please consider subscribing. I might be a little bit biased there, but... Hey, just do so. Do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. I took a couple days off as well from working on this stuff inside of Ukraine. I was inside of my warehouse. It's kind of give it kind of a, I needed to get adjusted. This is the best way, best way to put it. It's, it's taking a little bit more of an undertaking over on the other channel. Uh, it's been, uh, oh, anyway, we're good over there. So we're, we're back at, it. I, I did, uh, I did, I kept tabs on Ukraine, of course. I mean, that's pretty much what I do. Like my life consists of like looking at stuff and like getting stuff on the Ukraine. There's been a, a lot going on over the last 48 hours. Uh, in regards to, like, I, I, Russian state TV so it's kind of funny. Uh, but what's going on on the ground is pretty much what I expected to happen in the last 48 hours. There's been a lot of celebrating in the streets of Kyrgyzstan, which is to be expected. So what is funny about, about this kind of clip and seeing this type of video is that the Kremlin, remember back like month month ago, month or two ago, they claimed like 105% of this area was 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 fine, like wanting to be or voting to be in favor of becoming a part of Russia. But the moment that they were they left, uh, all we see is these celebrations like we've seen like maybe back in France in the 40s. Like I, I saw something funny as well when I was scrolling through one of the uh, one of the places I have to unfortunately look at some of this information on. And someone had actually said that Putin now has the most recorded retreats in history in a certain time frame, and they took that spot from the, the French. So I have no idea if that's factual, but it's still kind of funny because we all know the French, well, they're a powerful military, but they've had some problems in the past with retreating and, and so on. And I'm not, I'm not trying to poke any fun at you French, but... Yeah, I am. So I also keep seeing these videos of Ukrainian troops crossing waterways, which I see people claiming that the Ukrainians are crossing the river down there in Kyrgyzstan and landing somewhere on the opposite side. I'm also not sure if these are, are recent or not, or if they were shared just to cause a little bit of mental game with the Russians. I know the Ukrainian soft units have been running hits across the river for months. I've had two guys on this episode who were fighting down inside of Kyrgyzstan, and both of them... I've said the same thing. They've been running uh, hits back across the river the entire time. So it's been happening. I don't know if they're they're new or if they're not. Either way, there you go. Now, one of the main topics floating around right now is the fact that HIMARS will soon be inside of Kirsten firing on the Russian positions. I told you guys uh, in the last episode, I always say this in the last episode. But anyway, we t I told you guys this will be a key factor in degrading the morale of the Russians over the winter months. Some also think that the winter months will not slow down the Ukrainians because they are used to this environment, and, which is true, of course, they are. They, they live there. Um, but more goes into that to just human, the human aspect of war. The cold brings on more issues with vehicles, for sure. Like seals will bust, uh, liquids are not, you know, like in diesel. Like it just, just, it's just different. You know, road, roads are going to get sloppy. Vehicles are going to get stuck. Track vehicles will will throw track a bit more in these these type of conditions, which which causes things to slow down. Okay, it's vehicle maintenance is going to be key. Okay, now there's also some pluses here for the Ukrainians. Uh, one being the fact that Russians' equipment we've seen these soldiers like have like their snivel gear, I should say, is is going to be a, a a key factor in the degrading of the morale over time. It's going to deteriorate fairly quick because they're constantly going to be pounded daily with shells, shelling. That's all that's going to happen. The advantage will also shift in favor to heavy artillery pieces and track vehicles to a certain extent because they're not going to be able to hide in the, in the wood lines due to the leaves falling off. The trees are going to be bare. You know what I mean? Just makes sense. Now, the Ukrainians also have the momentum on their side right now, so they have no real reason to stop pushing as much as they possibly can uh, to kill off any of the chance the Russians have to actually be grouping for spring. So when people talk about winter months slowdown, yes, that's going to be a thing, but it's not going to stop the war inside of Ukraine. Like, I don't care where you're from. If you're cold, wet, and getting shelled, and it's just miserable conditions, you don't want to be there, it's not going to be fun. It's just, just like, you're just going to be like, God, screw this, I'm done. Anyway, one of the most well-known key battles in World War II, by the way, was actually fought and won during the winter months. And I, I was there over the winter time, uh, excuse me, I was there in the summertime. And it's like, it's the most crazy experience standing in the same foxholes as those men. It's pretty insane. Down in Bastogne. Or up in Bastogne, or over in Bastogne, however you want to put it. So with the bustling holiday season just around the corner, it is the perfect time to plan ahead with Factor, a ready-to-eat meal delivery. They shop, prep, cook, and deliver to your door so you can enjoy chef-crafted, dietitian-approved meals during the holidays, minus the hassle. 
Factors, fresh, never frozen meals make it easy to fuel up when I'm on the go. And I, I get to save time with meals delivered ready to eat and heat up in just two minutes. Factor now offers 34 meals per week and 36 add-on options like smoothies, juices, snacks, more to keep me going no matter what I have going on. Factor is cheaper than dining out, which is a great thing. So when things get hectic during the holidays, Factor is flexible. Change your orders up every single week with plans ranging from 4 to 18 meals per week and pause and or reschedule your deliveries anytime. Factors, no prep, no mess meals save me so much time on planning and cleanup so I can I can fully enjoy the holidays without wasting hours inside of the kitchen. Not only does Factor offer fast, simple solutions when I'm too busy to cook, they also help me stay on top of my goals with offering like Protein Plus and Keto so I can stay on track. In addition to ready eat meals, they have cold-pressed juices, smoothies, energy bites, extra protein, veggie sides, and more to keep me energized during the frantic holiday times. So head over to go.factor75.com forward slash Rob60 to use code Rob60 and get 60% off your first box. That is right. Go to go.factor75.com forward slash Rob60 and use code Rob60 to get 60% off your first box. That's code Rob60 at go.factor75.com forward slash Rob60 to get 60% off your first First box will be linked to the very top of the description for everybody here on the channel. Now, we're finally getting some footage from on the ground showing the routes that have been used in the areas that we've been talking about over the last few months. So this was actually published by the National Police of Ukraine of what it looks like on the ground just outside of Davidiv Brid. So this is one of the areas that has had some really, really, really intense fighting for months. And we also uh, were getting to see some of the, the ammo dumps that the Russians actually left on the outskirts of Kyrgyzstan as well. So who knows how many of these actually went left behind by the Russians as they retreated uh, this area. But it's a good thing for the Ukrainians because all this small uh, this ammo, all, this, all of it, all of it can be utilized for, for, the, for their own pleasure. Well, that's one way to look at it. Like I told you guys in the last episode as well that we should be seeing some juicy clips from the Russians on, uh, well, Russians on TV trying to explain what really happened in Kyrgyzstan. And boy, have they been busy trying to come up with some super top secret ideas that are a part of Putin's plan. Я надеюсь, что может это тайный план а, по заманиванию. То есть, вот они... говорили, ровно неделю назад, помнишь, мы с тобой говорили, да. ты говоришь, что скорее всего это ловушка. Да. Вот произошла, не, 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 я... произошла сейчас, вот эта вот Сейчас история, я о более да. глобальном да. заманивании. Ты что? Mm. Сейчас мы показываем, что мы не можем сопротивляться так. войскам НАТО. Значит, войска НАТО... Уже потеряв все берега, переходят границы Польши, Словакии, Чехии и все остальное, заполняют Украину. Так. И тут мы их всех уничтожаем, ну, чем-то таким, фабами, напалмом, и они в испуге убегают обратно. Ну, потому что другого плана у меня нет. So, this is a top secret plan. All right, this is what this, is what this guy came up with, is to let the Ukrainian military feel as if they, they beat us back, right, as the Russians. So that NATO will cross into Poland or cross from Poland into Ukraine to help with the war. And then the Russians are going to pounce with all their might and heavy bombs and apparently napalm like it's the 70s. There's a reason why the host couldn't keep a straight face and it was really hard for me to as well as he was trying to explain some of the reasoning. So just to go back over this entire thought process, just for everybody in, the, in my mental sake, if America had any intentions in putting troops on the ground physically inside of Ukraine to help with the war effort, don't you think it would have happened like maybe eight months ago? when Ukraine was losing territory daily, Russia has lost 64,000 square kilometers of territory since April 1st. So why on world, why, why in this world would, would, would this guy's logic make any sense? We have to understand for ourselves, we are fighting, 
или нет. Ты понимаешь, этот вопрос, как мне кажется, оскорбительным может показаться тем пацанам, ребятам, мужикам, кузнечам конечно, на передовой, конечно. которые двухсотых и трехсотых отгружают, и сами там умирают, и постоят, героические поступки. Но вы теперь представьте, до какой степени он может им оказаться оскорбительным, если они все больше и больше начнут понимать разрыв между их реальностью, куда их послала Родина, и вот этой нашей мирной реальностью, где ничего не происходит, где почему-то после такого отхода, я, у меня много вопросов, очень много. Я, как и все общество, задаюсь вопросами, к сожалению, не получая ответов. Причем это не военные тайны, я хочу узнать. Я не хочу узнать секретные планы Генштаба. Нет. Я хочу понять, потому что в этой недосказанности появляются очень хорошо используемые и культивируемые той стороной истории. А может, это договорняк? А может, вот зерновая сделочка? А mm. вот, может быть, вот тут не ответили? А вот уже четыре дня никто не бомбит Киев инфраструктуру. Mm -hmm. Никто не обратил внимания? Четыре или пять? Обратили, обратили внимание. Вот. Из Херсона так ушли, а в спину не стреляли, украинцы говорят нам. Ну, в смысле, переходящим... Э, ну, говорят. Нам же никто другой больше не говорит. Ну, так вот... С передовой раз. Ну, сегодня ночью было просто там огромное количество было информации, что как раз стреляли. Да. Стреляли да. непонятно. Да. То есть это, это правда или неправда, но Дальше. тем не менее информация была. А это была. все сходится, значит, с заявлениями всех. Вот сегодня Рябков. Да. Мы открыты для мирных, без всяких условий. Вот я как гражданин что должен подумать? Да. Now, bear with me. I know that was a long clip, but it makes me wonder if the first part was somewhat of a joke or not because he was questioning his government completely, like as a whole. So just so everybody's aware, I actually watch these videos and I react to them without any knowledge or context of what's coming next. So saying the information war is being won by Ukraine is, is actually true because uh, for what is going on inside of Kyrgyzstan and just Ukraine as a whole, the Russians really have nothing to show. The Ukrainians were also pounding the Russians like tremendously as they were leaving Kirsten. So I can assure you him thinking that there was no secret deal made as false. Kiev is, is, is not really, I don't think they're here to make any deals. Um, I don't think Russia really has any, the, the ability to make a deal at this point. Like what are they going to offer? We're going to leave the entire country as a whole. We know that's not going to be a thing. We know they don't want to, they, they don't, they don't want to give up anything they've had since prior to 2014. They want to go back to all those lines. So I, I don't, it's just, they don't really have anything. So the Ukrainians have everything to gain here. So anyway, and, and another thing is the stock power is extremely low. Uh, as we've noted in the past, if you remember correctly, or I guess if I remember correctly, is a better way to put it, they roughly have 75% of their long range missiles have already been expended. Okay. So it would take them years to actually replace these things as well. So they have to keep a stored amount for their own personal safety within Russia, just in case for some odd reason, the West decides to wage total war, which isn't going to happen, of course, unless the Kremlin decides to act up. So established titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts. It is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds, lords and ladies in English. Title packs give you guys at least one square foot of dedicated land with a unique plot number on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland, and you get this official certificate as well. They also plant a tree with every single order and work with global charities like One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation efforts. Wow, that is a tough word for me. That is a tough one, but you guys, they plant trees with every single order. You could officially include the title Lord and or Lady on your credit card, plane tickets, dating profiles, if it makes you happy. It also makes really awesome gifts. Like you guys see this right now. I am Lord Robert Turkla. I own a chunk of land over there in said Scotland. I have also planted a tree with my name on it. The first 200 people also purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be the next, per well, you'll be right next to my plot within a few minutes of walking distance, but depending on how many of you guys want to become lords and ladies and such, and we can build our own little speak the truth kingdom, if you know what I mean, over there in Scotland drink some scotch and enjoy ourselves. Anyway, Tata, Established Titles is running a uh, massive early Black Friday sale right now. Plus, if you guys use the code TRUTH, you guys get an additional 10% off. So go to EstablishedTitles.com forward slash truth to get your gifts and support this channel. I'm telling you guys right now, this is a great gift. Christmas is coming up. I mean, who doesn't want to open them and say, oh my God, I got you a plot of land in Scotland. That is great. 
has my plot number, everything. Lord Robert Turkla. It's great. Anyways, go to uh, establishedtitles.com forward slash truth to get your guys' gifts. Save 10% off by using the code truth at checkout. It'll be linked down in the description as well. So I just realized something I, I started talking about earlier with the high mars inside this episode. And I kind of veered off track just a tad bit and started talking about the winter months, which is shouldn't be shocking to anybody. Now, now here in here's in soon, I guess you would say, we're going to be seeing these things start rolling in. It's going to become a massive problem for the Russians on the opposite bank of the river who are just sitting these little crappy concrete pillbox deals and or those trench systems. Like They're going to be pounded relentlessly by artillery rounds daily uh, through the night, all winter, just degrading the morale down. It's going to happen. It's just it's the way it is. Now, this is going to be uh, just normal artillery pieces doing the work. That's all it's going to be. Now, the high mars they're going to be able to touch anything the Russians have logistical-wise. All the routes leading in from Crimea, every single one of them can be touched. Like, this is why losing Kyrgyzstan is such a big deal. It wasn't just for the fact they're liberating another city. Now, all the stuff that's been given to them, they can touch literally anything in the southern portion of the country. Like, they can almost touch uh, Mariupol. Like, like, look at this. This is crazy. So you guys see this graphic that's up on the screen? You literally can almost see the outer rings, the single rings from Kyrgyzstan can almost touch Mariupol. Like, they can touch anything in Crimea. They can touch the Kerch Bridge if they wanted to. Now, I think they could actually touch that prior, like, south of Zapser I think I showed you guys that. But, like, maneuvering the equipment, I don't really know how tough that is, like, logistical strain right now they're dealing with. So I, I, I don't really know. I'm not privy to that information, or really much information at all. I just kind of put these together myself. So... What it really does is give the Ukrainians the ability to strike all these areas on the opposite side of the river while possibly pushing an element down south from the Zapsavir region. This is something I think we might see in the future. Like the Russians are also pushing these photos like this one or these these four, I guess you'd say. They're trying to claim that there's some secret super knowledge of these HIMARS that they've apparently attained access through some undercover channels, literally what they're calling them, undercover channels. Uh, they claim to have gotten their hands on some smuggled HIMARS missiles that were sold on the black market. I feel kind of bad for the Russians, honestly, so I'm going to enjoy breaking down this just for a minute. It's pretty comical. So these images, if you guys have seen them, we're, we're rotating them across the screen and whatnot. Um, the Heimars have been doing so so much damage that they need to come up with some sort of plan to stage the fact that they're figuring out a way to, to defeat it, this NATO super secret stuff. If they didn't know, uh, this technology from the Heimars was created back in the mid-90s. I believe it was like 94, 95. It's like literally the mid-90s, okay? It's 2022, and they haven't created something to stop a 30-year-old tech. It's literally almost 30 years old. They attach like a $9 multimeter, by the way, that I found on Amazon, the exact same one. And there's one that's from like the 60s, by the way, that's also there. To, like, to some, like, <laughs> were, they, were they hoping they get some crazy reading off this thing? Like, they also have like a torn up piece of cardboard off the nose of what supposedly, like, some, some the nose of this high mark. Uh, the almighty Russia military is so excited like they get to attempt to reverse engineer this american technology from the mid 90s like they think about that they're so excited they're posting about this 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 is a huge win they then not realize there's also like some blocking software that goes on with this thing also so maybe all these things had like some type of warfare preparation to where it's been planned for you really think we're going to be sending equipment over there that there is a a chance that we know it's going to fall into the hands of the russians for their own gain come on now come on Let's just be real. Тем неприятностям, которые есть. Сейчас же идет религиозная война. Это война, которую мы не хотим назвать своими именами. Это война, где мелкий бес Зеленский представляет интересы и выступает таким острием со своими наемниками абсолютного зла. При этом это зло рядится в одежды терпимости, толерантности. Вот так. Вот так, дорогие друзья. So here we are, almost nine months into the special military operation that was started because of the Nazis being inside of Ukraine and is now switched over to being a religious war that is being fought because Zelensky has a horde of evil men who are reaching havoc, or wreaking havoc, excuse me, on the entire world. That's where we're at now. Мы никак не можем понять, что это война в которой ставится цель уничтожения нас. Неужели у кого-то есть еще хоть какие-то сомнения? Главная единственная цель существования НАТО — уничтожение России. Никакой другой цели нет. При этом уничтожение России, потому что Россия является, несмотря на атеистическое советское прошлое, ну, Россия является страной традиционных ценностей. Великой православной, великой мусульманской 
Now we're going to go on to the fact that America is trying to destroy Russia because it's high religious values it holds. That's, that's the next one. Uh, somewhat ironic about this thing uh, because apparently he doesn't realize that here in America is so, like, literally so religiously free, like the country as a whole. A, a person can, can believe in literally anything. If a person wants to worship some weird alien creature, they can go create a church. They can gather a bunch of people, never pay taxes on whatever they're doing inside this church, and believe in this alien creature. And we're not going to do anything about it because we don't care. Like claiming we were trying to destroy a country due to having a religious background is crazy and completely the opposite agenda they should be probably pushing. Honestly, the Russians, if you're a Russian watching this, and I know there's like 10% of you, so there's like over 10,000 of you, so way to go. There's like 15 or so. So how you guys doing? They need to, you guys need to stick to the plan that America wants to stay the world's superpower and not allow Russia to gain control over this spot because... That one's actually believable. Это вечная ложь Запада. Почему они все со своими мерзкими, тупыми, вобьями, как же сказать, хари как у воблы? Воблиями, так вот, ну звучит уже как мат. Харями вот нам рассказывает о том, что Россия ведет несправедливую и неспровоцированную войну. Вы что, охренели? Вы начали войну! Fish faces. That's literally the term he came up with. To describe us. Fish faces. Fish faces. What the... What is that even... We, I mean, also, we, we started this... I'm so confused right now. Like, what is going on? Hey, I, I'm, 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 I'm so glad we get to follow this path of what this guy's trying to lead us down because it is a doozy. We are like we are doing good will. 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 We Марасы, то, что в течение первых трех дней чуть ли не половину сразу отдали. Ah, yes, that's exactly what happened. The Russians left all these areas because it was goodwill gesture and not them getting their teeth kicked in daily. That is factual stuff, 100%. Все равно мы добились колоссальных успехов. А потом что? Ну, а потом-то что? Потом мы гигантской линией фронта, а, а у нас ухопутные войска 300 тысяч, И вот мы типа доброй воли. Я помню, как нам рассказывали, в том числе уважаемые люди. Они говорили, что да, ну вы не понимаете, мы сейчас быстро отходим от Киева и вот берем в кольцо группировку на Донбассе. Ну что не взяли? Ну хоть объясни, что не взяли-то? Не получилось? Ну накажите тех, которые разработали план, у него не получилось. Ну мы же по-прежнему. Когда я орал, как резанный, с февраля месяца, что необходимо наносить удары по мостам, разничать инфраструктуру, уничтожать нам эти места входов. Мне говорили, да ты ничего не понимаешь. Мы технику сейчас в одном месте, они всю привезут, и мы как долбанем. I mean, yeah, his, his plan is great, no? And it would have been great if they, if they had followed through with this plan, if they were capable of doing so. I remember near the beginning of this thing when Russia was claiming they were going to hit every single supply route they had, every single piece of NATO equipment that comes in the country, they're going to destroy. They have not even touched a single one. They're going to destroy all the bridges, all the all the overpasses, all the underpasses, whatever that means. They're going to destroy all the, all the cave structures, all those tunnel systems, everything. I don't know what I meant with cave structures, but I was trying to think of tunnels, like what you drive through. Oh, God. Nine months into this, we thought, if you were to tell me nine months ago that the Ukrainian military would be conducting the kind of operations they're doing right now and taking back the ground they're doing, I would have said, I don't know if that's feasible. I really just don't. Russia is, is a really powerful, like, we should be worried about the Russian military. They're super powerful. Two months into it, I'm like, hmm, they're not really that good. Six months into it, I'm like, God, they're terrible. Now we're nine months into it, I'm like, they just need to just wave the white flag. Ukrainian military is absolutely pounding them into this oblivion. All right, all right. So shifting over here to some mapping for y'all. We got three different, three different good ones to show you. I guess here's up here in the northeastern side of the country, where we've got a, a few things going on. I guess you say over the last 24 hours, the Russians have been attempting to push out a few different areas in this northern region, trying to take back some of the ground they had lost, which is an effort that went literally had no substance whatsoever, and the efforts didn't amount to anything. I am almost certain this area was almost put to a pause uh, to push all the focus down to Kyrgyzstan since they knew what was going on. These are the three areas I'm talking about. And I'm talking about from the Ukrainian side of things, by the way. I think this, this see, we're going to see the resources probably shift back into this area. I'm not talking about men as in resources. I'm talking about brain power. That's probably the best way to put it. I, I think that's the, 
I think that's a correct way to put it. I could be incorrect, but I I don't know. I could be wrong. I think so. Right now, I think there's a possibility there's a weakness inside the south, the uh, southern region, like we may not know about, clearly. And I think the Russians know about it just a little bit because they've been fortifying their cities, these major cities, after the fall of Kyrgyzstan. I think it actually started, matter of fact, like a week ago or so. Uh, I do believe the Ukrainians will continue onward here later in the weeks coming, the coming weeks. But the, there is one report, by the way. There's claims that the Ukrainian element has actually gotten a little bit closer to this P-66 route right here, okay? Right through here. Like, they're two kilometers away. Like, very, very close. And they're, they're, it's almost, almost cut off the, the route from Kremlin all the way up to Sivito. So, that is something that we may touch on tomorrow. I do believe it could be true, but I like to make sure things happen. The only time so far in the last nine, in almost nine months that we went ahead and did something was down at Kyrgyzstan. And I feel good about it because I was, it's pretty obvious. So no real change in this area. Bilovica, the Russians are still trying to attempt to push down. We're going to scroll down south here to Bakhmut. So all the way down through here. When it comes to Bakhmut, we're seeing the same meat grinder effect that we've been having down there for months and months and months. The fight fighting itself is like really, really, really intense. And it's intensified a little bit more over the last two days, which I, I, I'm still not entirely sure why the Russians are, are continuing. They haven't gained any ground. They've been stalled on the outer edge of the city for quite a long time. Like if I'm looking from the outside, looking in this area, and I know there, there's some Russians. Well, why, why are you guys pushing through this area? You guys have do not have control of any of the high ground. You don't have air superiority. You have more men in this area, yes, which are being pounded from the, from the high ground of the Ukrainians. The only thing I can assume, it's more of like an image thing. Like if they decide to shift all these troops to a different side of the country, it would look like another loss. And they can't really have that right now. So that's the only thing I can hack, I, I can think of the, the northern side, northwestern side, excuse me, area Bakhmut, all that area is all high, uh, all high ground, and they're just pounding the Russians. I just, I don't know. Like I get it, if you take the city, that's great for you. But what are you going to do past that? What's the plan? Pa Why is no one asking? What is your plan? Like what is your plan after that? You know how much ground you have to look at all the ground that they've lost through here. Like, that is tremendous. Like, when you think about that, over the last month, all that ground has been lost, and you're still trying to push through this one area right here, just losing tons and ten thousands of men? I don't get it. I really don't. I really don't. Just south of here, though, there's just one chunk of gland, one chunk of ground right there, just north of Pisky. Uh, the Russians have actually gained a little bit of ground on the outskirts of Optine. They claim to completely can take control of this area. I haven't been able to see any type of footage whatsoever of this being true. I have adjusted the area on the mapping, so we at least have it. We're going to get some verification most likely tomorrow if this is true or not. But we shall see. Shifting over here to Kyrgyzstan, it looks pretty good. This all was controlled by the Russians like four days ago. Now look at it. Nothing. Now there's a couple areas where there's key concentration of men on the Russian side of things. So I'm going to show you guys. You have one that is roughly about right here. Trench systems and such. And then they're actually exfilling their men to, hold on, I'm, I'm trying to gauge myself. Oh, right here. All right, just right through there. That is where all the areas, that, oh, excuse me, that's where all the men who are getting injured on the Russian side of the thing are being shifted and transferred. That's where their uh, casualty collection point is, I guess you would say, is for this area right now. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, the Kirsten government has actually urged every single civilian inside the area to evacuate due to the potential thought of Russian strikes inside this area. They're worried that the Russians will be stomping their feet like an angry child because, well, that's just what they do. Take their anger out on the civilian population who decided to stay after this area was liberated. Uh, the Ukrainians have also secured two S-300 air defense complexes that were left behind by the Russians who retreated. The Ukrainians have also struck a Russian troop concentration on the opposite side of the river, which was reported to actually causing uh, roughly about 100 casualties in one strike. Other than that, I don't expect much from this area. The Ukrainians are pounding the Russians with relentless artillery in hopes to deteriorate their morale uh, overall in hopes to they actually can continue on with the next phase. Now, all those, I wanted to show you guys all that uh, area we saw of the, the videos coming through. Um, earlier with the, the, the river crossings, from what I could tell, it's down here in this area. Now, it shows to be a solid green chunk of land. I'll tell you guys right now, it's not. It's more like, it reminds me of these swamps of, I don't want to say swamps, but the areas down in like Savannah, Georgia, or down in there. So you guys see all this? They're like waterways. we got to drive around. I, I, it's not solid ground. So this is the area where those videos are supposedly coming from. So just take it with a grain of salt. We'll see in the next coming days what's really going on. They could be just poking fun with the Russians for all I know, but it seems kind of sketchy crossing that very large bit of water right there. 
with dinghies. I mean, it's quite large and also, yeah, it's quite large. Anyway, doesn't really matter. I do love you guys. Thanks for hanging out. Then go check out the sponsor. It'll be in the top description. Other than that, I am out.